What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Drake DG, Northwest Finest, and we right here, another episode of the Five Finger Discount. Tonight, I have a very special guest. You might know who he is. My boy, Scott Gordon, a.k.a. Nonstop Scott. Oh. Yeah. Get the money fast, no late payment. She know where it's at, she don't gotta say shit. Get a check, spend a check on some day shit. She better bring back double what I gave. What's up, my boy? Man, how you doing? How you doing, sir? Thank you very Man, much. Man, you I came all the way down from the 253. Come fuck with your boy. Yeah, 253, original 253. What do you mean by that? Man, um, well, my dad was born, you know, I was born in Tacoma at Madigan. Oh, you shit. You know, I'm, okay. I'm an old nigga, so, you I know. I didn't know you were really born in Tacoma. Yeah, I was born at Madigan. My dad was in the military. I, I was born, you know, in 67. Okay. So, you know, went to Japan, Guam, you know, did all the military things. Settled in the Bay Area, like, in 1970. Two, three, seventy two, three. You know. Okay. My dad was at Travis Air Force Base, you know, six kids, you know, and you know, so I'm originally Tactonian. Yeah. You know. Oh but shit. I'm you Bay Area, but, but I'm Bay Area bred though. A Tactonian though? Right. That's but a, I'm but I'm Bay Area thing. bred though. Okay. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Um so uh non stop, where'd you get that from? Because that's how I person that's how I like first met you was right. the host. Nonstop Scott. Right, right. So, like, where did that come from? Man, um, well, a friend of mine named his name is Pat McGraw. Okay, okay. they call him DJ Macadocious. Okay, That's a good he's name. from he's from the Bay Area, and he owns a company called the Gumbo Mix. I'm and name. you know, we sold we sold to ARS Records up here. We sold to all the record stores down in the CD and everything. And I own half the company. So back. In the early 80s and shit, man, I was managing, like, I managed my first, like, club, like, when I was, like, in 1982. I was 16. Yeah, yeah. It was a teen club, and I, I had a break dance group called Galactic Breaking Crew. I had, a, I had, I had. His names are great. Oh, man. Let me, let me tell you, the, the era, listen, the era that, that I grew up on, man, was fantastic, bro. You know, head spinning, man, you know, break dancing, popping, and, you know, there, there was also the gang situation upon that, but. What, what I did is I, I, I saw a business opportunity because I grew up in a small town, Vacaville. Va Vacaville. Oh, bro, the Bay, Vacaville. Yeah, 707. I used to work at the Six Flags in Vallejo. Oh, oh bro. <laughs> hey, that's how, <laughs> listen, that's how the, like, like, it transformed from Six Flags, like, to, it had the marina yeah. and everything. But I'm going to tell you, man. I used to live in Fair, uh, Fairfield. Okay, well, Vacaville's here. Right Fairfield's there. Vacaville's right, right there. there. Yeah. Okay. But let Summers. me tell you a little bit about when you sat there and said, you know, Marine World, right? Yeah. Okay. I remember they, they have the, when you calm down I-80, um, into Vallejo over the hill. Yeah. Okay. You have, when you come down, you have, uh, when you make the left, you had the, the marina over here and all the amusement over here. But on the right hand side was the civic center. Right. Okay. Man, I remember I was, I think I was like, this was like maybe 1980, maybe 87, 88 or something like that. Yeah. I remember going to, uh, the civic center. To see see world class record crew. It, uh, it was Dr. Dre, Michelle, uh, Yella, um, DJ Yella. You know, yeah, yeah, That's DJ the Yella. Original team, right? Right, there. right, right, right. The original squad. Man, let me tell you, Dre. Dre was up there in like this, uh, like this. Uh, Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre. Oh, he, he had he had the platform shoes on. He had he, you know he had the. Uh, you know, they're all like in like uniform back then, you know, like the sexy look for, for, you know, an artist, you right. know, like that. Back right? in the day. Back right, in the day, right. little shortcut afro and everything. Right, right, right. Little Chalet came out, did her thing, sang with her little whiny voice, shit like that. <laughs> Man, it was off the hook and shit just to bring that up. But I also got a chance to see Janet Jackson. No fucking way. At that same civic center. Here's the fucked up part. They booed her. No oh, way! Nigga, let me hold tell on, you, bro. Let me you tell telling you. me, hold on. You got a story. Of it was Janet. control. It was control. You it was the control saw album. The Janet right. Jackson right. get booed. Man, ever. This not booed, though. They threw shit at her. Get, bro, please, please tell me about this shit. Nigga, I, 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 wasn't, listen, I wasn't even born yet, so I got to so, experience so, it through you. So, you know, Janet Jackson shows up. It's, it's like her first album, Control Album. She's hella young, shit like that. Yeah. Right. I remember that. She, she's in Vallejo doing a show at the Vallejo Civic Center. 
which is right across the street from the Marine, from Six yes, Flags. it's all right there on the wall. Right, yeah. right. You know, you come over, and you know, to the left is like big parking, yeah, big civic center. So yeah. boom, Janet Jackson said, "Man, they boo her off the stage, bro. She she didn't even get through probably two songs, right? Threw shit at her and everything. Man, she she said that she would never, ever." Come perform in the Bay. Ever, <laughs> I didn't believe bro. it. I wouldn't come back after, either. dude. This is like on her first album, bro, man. Bro, and first of all, just for the simple fact of who her brother is, like, it, I would be <laughs> just flabbergasted. Yeah, but you know what, man? A lot of us, man, back then, man, you know, we used to think Janet and Michael were the same person. Damn near. Yeah, it was like you know because it was weird because you you seen Janet, and you see Michael, but you never see them together. That's true. That's true. So, you know, back Except then. Except for on camera <laughs> somewhere at some point in time. Yeah, so, you know, growing up in the Bay, man, was always, you know, a, um, a, a great thing. But, you know, I, I, I did a lot of things in the Bay, yeah. you know. Um, did, did you ever see Mac Dre live? Man, you know, it's really funny you brought up Mac Dre. Um, so, so when I was like 23, 24, there was like maybe 1993, uh, 94. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you know, Mac Dre, you know, I said he's from Vallejo. We're all 707. Yeah. Vacaville, Fairfield, Susun, Vallejo, right. you know, we're all 707. Right. Just cross that. Concrete. You know, but I'm a little older than some of the people like 40, be legit and all them, a little yeah. bit older. We're around like a couple of years. Old. But back then, you know, I was like the promoter dude. Right. So I was throwing parties when I was like 16, mm -hmm. you know, and so bringing up Mac Dre, when, when, when I got hired at this company called City Hall Record Distributors, uh, Walter Zelnick, man, we, we had Rap A Lot, Priority, we had, you know, uh, uh, Mac Dre's label and everything. I remember, you know, Walter coming up to me and said, Scott, man, you know, um, you know, you're, you know, Mac Dre? Yeah. And I was like, no, I've never met him before, you know? And next thing you know, he comes into, my office. I, I think I was like 23, 24. And he came in with uh, Kyrie hmm. and uh, uh, Renal, who were the owners of Strictly Business Records at the time. That was, that was Mac Dre's, you know, first label hmm. before Fizz Nation and right, right, other right, the whole movie. Like, right, right. He had a whole different set of investors that was producing his music. Like, if you look at Mac Dre's history, you look on the back of the albums when it was cassette, CD, yeah. and vinyl. Right. It, it says strictly business records. Okay. And that, that's Kyrie and, and Renal from, from Vallejo. And, you know, I love them niggas to death because, you know, for, for them, and, and man, bro, let me tell you, man, I, I remember when, when Mac Dre um, went, to, went to prison. Yeah. Uh, for all the bank robberies. Yeah. You know, with Diggs and all, all the other shit. Yeah. Going on. And um, Kyrie had done called me. He was like, Scott, what you doing, nigga? I'm like, what's up, Kyrie? What you got going on? Man, listen, man. Atlantic Records, man. Get ready to give us like, like two, 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 four, five million dollars. Bro, I need to talk to you. I said, man, me and we, we went off. I was like, okay, well, you know. What, what's, what's, you know, I know what's going on with Mac Dre, you know, and, and all the whole thing, man. What, what's going on? I said, man, come on, Scott. Let's, let's, you know, come to the house. So, boom, went to the house, right? He, he had this uh, house in the cut, uh, right in the crest. Yeah. And, and when you went into Kyrie's house, it was just full of records and equipment and a big board and a booth. It was all in his house, bro. You know, and, and that's a big deal back in the day. That's the yeah. amount of equipment it took to produce that kind of dude, shit. dude racks like racks with like like uh, tube compressors, equalizers, everything there. There was no digital shit. No, it was that just shit all was racks. racks, racks and reels. Yeah. Right? So he was like, Scott, listen, man. You know, Mac Dre in jail and shit like that, man. You know, but you know, I'm a, I got these recordings that he did over the phone. Ah. So, all of a sudden, man, next thing you know, <coughs> he did the deal with Atlantic, they got a bunch of money, and then it, when, when, when Dre went to jail for all that shit, man, you know, Kyrie and them started putting out the records, you know, with, you know, under Strictly Business Records, if you, you go back, those, those songs were recorded with Matt Dre on the phone. 
Yeah. In prison. Wow. You know, and I was at the distributorship and working with with them and putting helping them put out those records. And it, it was dope as hell, bro, man. Like, I, I love Mac Dre, bro. You know? I mean, the Thiz movement was definitely the most impactful yeah. part of my middle school and early high school. Definitely shout out to Mac Dre. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, as a fellow Dre, right. you know, I definitely love the The whole, whole thing, you know, Diggs, you know, fucking the whole crew, man, you know, Thiz Nation, you know, Kyrie, you know, you know, much love. I even just opened for Jay Diggs. <coughs> Shout out to Phil Mo, who was on the show a couple episodes right. ago. He booked me for J Diggs. Great show. People came out, packed in for the Bay Area. For Man, sure. you know what? And, and like I told you before, not to cut you off, but I, but I told you a little earlier what it really attracted me. You know, I didn't know you. Yeah. You know, you weren't my friend. Right. You know, I had to really, like, look at you and see what your hustle was. Yeah. You know, to actually see, man, and I'm going to be honest with you, to actually see if you really doing this by yourself right. or if you really have a dedicated like loyalty, right. okay? Like a big homie, somebody to sit there, man, and even if you make a mistake, right. tell, that, tell that, that, nobody, that nobody's gonna sit there and judge you, right. you know? Like I don't know you, right. you know? I've still yet to eat at your table. Right. I've still yet to be, come in your car, right. you know? I forced my way into this interview. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know what? You did what you wanted to do, but you, yeah. you did it in a, in, with elegance. And the reason why I say that is because I did this interview because I wanted to. And I think that's what you wanted. You, you didn't want to it to be something that you felt like you were making someone do. You were like, I want you to interview me because you value who I am as a person. I, I value and, you. And my support for what you do. And then what I'm saying, I'm speaking on your behalf because you uh, think kind of second from the show, you have supported my shows for the last like year. You know what I'm saying? So ever yeah. since I started, you and your lady will come through and not only purchase tickets, but you come through, you have a good time, yeah. you get drinks, you eat, you entertain people, you make connections, you know, and you keep coming back. So, you know, the last conversation that I had with you, I was like, yo, you don't gotta pay to come to none of my events anymore. Right. And, you know, uh, I wanna do an interview with you. You know, right. so um but you know, you know the reason why, though, man. It, it's, it, bro. You know, I, I, we don't mind paying. That, that's not the thing about it, though. Is the, the reason why? And to be honest, my my girl, man, was like really like supportive of you from like day She's one. She's dope. You know, even when you had the house party out there in Auburn and yeah. shit like that. That shit. Was, you know, that wasn't my party. But it was your partner's party. Bro, but, I wasn't but, making my party. But you were still involved hold with on, it, though. Let's pause. But hold on, let's no, talk no pause, about it. though. Let's talk about it. You were still connected. No, I was. Okay, so we'll just say your connection. I definitely was. Okay. But I kind of want to talk about that party, right? Because there were so many moving parts. But I want to tell you what actually happened. Not like I'm excluding myself from the situation. Because I was the face of the shit. No, hold on. Before you tell me. Yeah. Here's the funny part. Before you tell me what happened. Yeah. Why don't you ask Scott. Yeah. Who wasn't there. Yeah. What happened. You told me your perspective because no, you told not me she came back and told you. No, no, bro. It was just wasn't her, bro. It was just the whole. Let me let me explain something, bro. I I keep telling people that everything that you guys are doing now, yeah. Scott was doing when I was like 13, 14, yeah, I mean, 15. You pretty much were saying and that it was unprofessional and that No, no, it, it wasn't it was, unprofessional. It was hella like unorganized. And everything, everything that was projected Not, from it that wasn't, event it wasn't was one hundred percent. It wasn't unorganized. What it was was is that nobody. Okay, here I'm gonna give you some boss shit. Okay, Al Capone, who was the biggest gangster, mm-hmm. sat there and said, "We can all be bosses and make money, but we make money, bro, if we all come together." Mm-hmm. Okay, come together. Right. You might not like me. You might not this, but. We make money together, right. okay? But somebody got to be the head of the round table right. to make sure that shit goes correct, right. okay? What I was trying to stress was is that, you know, the reason why I'm fucking with you uh-huh. and not the other motherfuckers right. is because maybe you needed somebody to tell you yeah. that maybe you were supposed to take control of the situation for Dre right. to look good. So 
You get what I'm saying? Look, you know, sometimes, you know, it's not about that moment when God right. puts people in front of you. Right. Sometimes, you know, God puts angels in front of you, man, down the line yeah. to go back and make you explain, you know what? I did. I, I was running with my head cut off that night. You know what? I was, you know, really not focused no, on. No, bro. Are you ready. ready for the truth, though? Okay. Because what you're talking off is like you say you weren't there. Right. So what you're speaking on is perspective. Right? Or what somebody else told you. No, so no, say, no. Hold on, hold on, not what somebody else says. Hold on, hear me but out. based upon based hear upon now, based upon now that the interview is now. Out, hear me out. Okay. I was not the head of anything. No. I was hold on, hear me out. I agree. Right? I agree. We're talking about, hold on. I agree. Let, let, hear what let, he said. He you, said that he was not the let, head let, of let's everything. Talk about what the event was first. So people who don't know. No, right? can we we're, agree that you weren't the head? Not even 100 percent Okay, we Let's agree that we were, he was I'm not the head. Like a motherfucker. So what we're talking about. Don't name drop. Of course. No. I blocked the nigga. Okay. So what happened was we threw uh I got reached out to about a mansion party. Right. And do wanted to do a three-day mansion party, right? Okay. So he asked me, he said, Dre, I need your help with it. I've already paid for everything, but I, I'll give you, I think he said like 40% of the door if you help me promote it because I don't really have a fan base. Right. Alton Porter, if anybody is in Tacoma, y'all all know who the uh, fuck he Alton said, is. He said he okay? spilled the name. And I'm Alton. Y'all know who the fuck he is. So pretty much what happened was I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to help you with catering. I reached out to one of my friends, had him cater the food. The people who did show up the first night Buddy was scared to charge him. The second night, Buddy was afraid to charge him. The third night, I showed up with food. It was supposed to be my night. That was New Year's. That's when it was supposed to be the most popular. I showed up that night with food to serve. They had boxes of pizza, and they were charging these cats $5 a slice. And on top of that, there was underage motherfuckers in the building. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. We are not going to talk about anything that Listen, R. Kelly, as long as the R. Kelly. No. So there was motherfuckers who wasn't supposed to be in there. Okay, I was in the okay. building. So first of all, of five first of all, minutes, hey, first of all, hey, first of all, man. I walked in and walked right the He up here spilling the beans and stuff. We're not talking about the beans. Everything else that We're not talking about the beans, Dre. Don't spill the beans. That's how long I was in the fucking building. Ten minutes. Okay. But that's how long it takes for motherfuckers to believe but, that you were the one in charge of Okay, everything. but here's the funny here's the funny part. As a person that didn't show up and, and a person that was looking in as, as a person that's done this already, here's what I was saying and here's what my view is. Uh, and that's the reason why I'm here now instead of earlier. In, right. in your beginning thing, because you know you do great interviews. I, I've seen them, bro. I like them. Even the one with my nephew was shit this was funny. You know, I, I I love that shit. But but at the same time, you know, like I said, this interview is not really about Scott, man, because you know I'm a Dre fan. No, I'm a Scott. Fan. And the reason why I say I'm a Dre fan is because of your hustle. Yeah, I appreciate okay. That. You know, I, I I you know, like I said, it was a minute before I. I interjecting myself you know the first time we met yeah. was at that party yeah. you had here with the pool party yeah. which i really enjoyed it was a good party. it was different, it was different. I, and i paid 20 dollars for the fucking good ass food and that, fucking left it you did. Two me plates. and my girl were, were parking Two bro stacks of plates bro parking bro we left we paid for it and we left the food Listen, them motherfuckers, the people at this building told me if I throw one more motherfucking party. Man. <laughs> well, maybe maybe you should think about throwing a resident appreciation party. Well, I mean, here's the thing. They, I can do... Like a block party. I can do what I want as long as I don't try and charge random streams. No, no. Here's what... Here's so what like, we'll, we could come together here, and have all our friends come together here, and come enjoy here, Here's what we'll do. We'll, we'll, we'll connect your 504 nonprofit company, because I know you have one. Yes. Okay? We'll go right across the street to the fire department. Tell them that we want to do a block resident with the fire department to close off and get a permit from the city yeah. to close off from this block to that block to this block, yeah. bring out some bouncy castles, we'll get the insurance for the property. We'll and talk about some money after that. 
you know, something like that. That that's what Scott do. Let, let but but like, hold on, hold on though. Hold but in regards to you being in, in charge of that party though, yeah. what what I loved about not even the it wasn't the reporting from my girl, bro. It's is what I observed, you know, from things. First of all, I, I thought it was really cool for you guys to have a house in the middle of you know, my girl told me she could come down the street. The house was down there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But you know what, though? What was what was cool part it is, is that you guys had a party without having conflict from police or other presence. Yeah. Now, the reason why I say that now maybe you should have took full control or made him as like a consultant. Like, like here's the thing, bro. The people who own the house started trying to get in on what we were doing to make money. I, mean, I would bro, have. Like I the would. people who bought the pizza, bro, or the people who were living in the house. They they got there before I did. Bro, they bro, were like, listen, we're seeing this over here. This this lady over listen, here. If knew, listen, if I knew. Listen, if I knew. Listen, based upon. Listen, based upon the the what was described well, to no, me, the house. It was. It was. Too, but hold on. Based. But look how Scott look at this. Here's how I look at this. Even though that you say that this is what happened, me as Scott takes what you went through. It goes through my mind, right? And then sits there and solves the issues and the problems so you make money. And just not at that spot, but you take what I say as a consultant because that's what I do. Okay, I decipher shit really quick, bro. You know, I, 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 I brag about this all the time. And, you know, I have literally made $60 million for my clients. I found a nigga... Laying on the motherfucking ground, my nigga. Planted him in earth. Loved him. Sat there and gave shine on him. And we made $22 million, nigga. Verified. And I got a piece of that. So all, all I'm saying is, is that I, I see, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not saying that you were wrong. I'm not saying you were right. No right. You know, right. There's no right or wrong. All I'm saying is what Scott do is look at you and sit there and say, I want to fuck with you. Because maybe you need an unk like me yeah. to, to sit there and, and, and say, you know what, Scott, listen, you know, I really want to do this, which you have done in regards to your casual party at the little Airbnb, which you haven't done yet. Because yeah. you know why? Because you're not ready yet. It's not right, it's not. It's developed. Develop. Right, right. That's why. See what I'm saying? Right. See how God? See how God brings things in the slow motion and right, my nigga. Shit, that's why I'm here. Right. Listen, I need you. You need me. So you, <laughs> you said something to me. Go ahead, at, uh, Lady Luck, about the bitches. At Lady Luck, you said they like to. Touch on you, you know. You, you want they want you to you want they want you to dance a little bit. Yeah, you, you, you. What do you mean by that? Okay. Well, what I mean by that is, is that I've been promoting Lady Luck for like over, close shout to ten out, years. Shout out Lucky, Lady Lucky, Luck. Lucky, love right, you. Right, uh, you know what? All the bartenders, all the Angelique, you know everybody. So the thing about Lady Luck is, listen to the name, Lady Luck. Right. It's been around for twenty seven years. Oh yeah. Wow. Hey, twenty seven. Yes, yeah, almost wow. thirty years. It's been a rocker club, country and western, R and B, hip hop. But it doesn't matter what form of music is. Women want to get dressed up and have fun. Yeah, they want to. They don't. You know, they, they most women that come on Friday nights they have kids. Yeah, for you sure. know, they want to put them to sleep. Boom, Baby boom, you know, right, 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 right. They want. They get out late. Right. Okay, Saturday, they dress. They to the nail shop early fucking Saturday morning, Facts. getting getting their nails done for Saturday night to get their hoe on. Facts, Facts bro. Facts. Hoe on, bro, Big for facts. real. So, but they want to be recognized just not by women, but by dudes too. Man, that lady luck, my women be complaining because they be getting dressed up, get, be getting fucked up. They be spending money at the bar, but the niggas want to wait until the end of the night to parking lot pimping, whatever how you want to call it, but these bitches want to be told earlier that they look good. Come and look, come on, come on, come and dance with me. Come on, man. I, you know I, that's why I talk shit to my niggas when I'm on the mic. 
I be like, yo, come on, man, this lady love, where are my ladies at with that good, that good pussy, baby? Where you at? Oh, come on. If your boo's in the building, slap the right ass. Slap the right ass. Slap the right ass. If your boo's in the building, slap the right ass. Slap the right ass. Nigga, I be having the women just so crunked up in the lady luck, bro. So the women be slapping the ass, right? The niggas be, be watching. Then next thing you know, me as nonstop Scott, which is like a character. Right, of course. Right, it's like Superman. Dre the party guy. Yeah, like Dre the party guy, right? So what I do is I offer, you know, because there's certain women who just don't want to dance. Right. So I offer them a cheer dance, you know, because I like to dance. Get my- so uh, you giving the girl a cheer dance? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. She liked that. Oh, she liked that, bro. Oh, was that nice? Man, come on, because I do it good. Like good. Give her that nonstop. Man, that nonstopper. That nonstopper. I'm from the Bay, my nigga. That <laughs> the nonstopper. Not that nonstopper. Or with the ER. The ER. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, man. So, okay. so okay. what I do is I, I energize the crowd. Okay. That's what it, me as a host do yeah. in a club. Okay. Because most niggas, it takes them a while for their blood to like warm up. Shit like that. Right. Like, for instance, I'm going to tell you a situation that was incredible. Yeah. So I'm at Lady Luck, man. I'm hosting. Okay. Me and my girl show up. Man, my girl's looking banging, man. See-through dress, everything. She up there with the DJ. We're chilling and shit. All of a sudden, you know, I noticed that there's a little light-skinned girl. Her name is Honey. Mm-hmm. Light-skinned, chocolate, thick thing, right? I could just smell her pussy now away. Nigga, I knew it was good, bro. Yeah. So it was her birthday. So, you know, I do my thing, you know, interchanging the women, so on early, getting the drinks flowing, because the whole thing is about getting the bar going. Right. Right. So, towards the stage, there was these four dudes, friends, okay, and they were just chilling, you know, hey, nonstop, yeah, you know, we can't wait for the women. I'm like, man, there's a couple, man, dude, you guys are here early. Looks like it to me is like two to one right now. See, a lot of people don't understand that most clubs are two to two and a half to three women per dude. How you have half a woman? Bro, it, it works out that way. You know, statistically, there's, there's statistics to clubs. There really are. You really, when you're a promoter of, of a club or doing an event, you really want to have between 1.5 or two women that's available for every guy. So what the half this dude. Oh, man, dude, limp. Is he a midget? Go by, it could be. Half a bitch. It could be a big bitch and have a skinny bitch. That, that's 1.5. But look at it. You got a big bitch and a half a bitch. So that's 1.5. Half a bitch. Okay. All right. So in statistically in numbers. Statistically. So if you have a club that has 300 people. Okay, you, you, or let's say 400. Okay. You really want 300 women okay. for every 100 guys. Okay. So that means every man has a third of a chance to, 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 to talk to a woman and be able to walk away with a number or enjoy themselves. The problem is, is that they fuck up the math because they're too scared to talk to the bitch. Okay. And that's what my bitches complain about. They get okay. dressed up, smelling good, pussy good. Okay. But the niggas, so in this situation, so honey, I walk her up past the niggas okay. to my girl and the DJ, right. introduce her. Right. So coming off the stage, they're right there. Right. So we wait a little bit. They don't offer to help her off the stage. They, don't, they, 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 they just give a gab and I'm walking a bad ass, thick ass bitch right past four niggas. So I walk past them, go to the niggas. I said, bro, are you guys tripping? Didn't I tell you that my women love to be entertained? Entertainment. Entertainment. What's wrong with that? So I went back and got the thick bitch, walked her past the four niggas, back to the stage, turned her around and said, here you go, gentlemen. Look how thick this bitch is. Look how, excuse me, honey, can you turn around? Man, she turned that fat ass around, boy. Shook that ass to them four niggas, bro. Let me tell you, when it was time for her to walk off the stage, my nigga, man, one nigga got on his stomach, the other nigga got on his four, the other nigga was on him, and they were like stairs coming down. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. 
And the whole night, they entertained her. That's what I'm talking about. You seem like an ass man. Who, me? Yeah. Man, I like an ass. A nice one. I like ass. I'm a, I like ass, too. Like, a nice, pretty... I'm a titty man myself. I like I like some big old full titties. You you know what, man? I, I'm hold on. I'm lying. I'm lying. Let me let me just break it down, okay? I personally, for me, when I look at a woman, yeah. okay, that I want, okay, or or any woman that men look at, my explanation is she's like a feast to me, okay. okay? Like my bag, okay? When I look at her, she's like my double baked potato at Daniel's, the porterhouse Not steak, the, double baked potato. the daughter, the, the, you know, with the sour cream and the yeah. cheese and the, just the way like, you want it. Yeah, just the way you want it, all just fluffy and right fat the way okay. you want it, right? Okay. Then you got the steak, you know, porterhouse cut the way you want to, made the way you want to. Season the way you want to. Damn, damn. Right. Then you got the lady coming out with the dessert cart. Right. Right. What you want, Mr. Gordon? Oh, let me get that strawberry cheesecake. Mm. Let me what, get that what the fuck, nigga? That's how I look at a woman. A woman's all edible. From her feet, to her butt cheeks, to her asshole, to her pussy, nigga, to her So it's safe to love. say you eat ass. You sweating talking about that. No, I've been sweating. It's hot up in this motherfucker. I, know, I done told it. you about the... Yeah, the see, it. this is what this nigga do right here. He told me earlier in the pre-funkin, in the pre-funkin, Scott, I'm going to get you hot so you take I your jacket know, off. Bro. You seem a little excited. About what? Dude, man. Yeah. Come on, man. You know why? Because I'm a real understander that man, as a man, man, take your mic off. Because it's hot in here. Okay, I'm taking off my jacket. I'm about to take off my jacket. I'm about to take off my jacket. I'm about to take off my jacket. I know, but he's taking off my jacket. This is a, also, this is a custom made jacket by I like Scott that. Gordon and Letter my partners. I like that. And the shirt, too. I like that. Okay, so the way, like I said, the way we as men are, are real simple, okay? We, we think about two things, two things only. Yeah. We, we think about work yeah. and woman. And what I mean by that is, Work means money. Right. We know that as a man, just like in the good book of Adam, he tent the earth, worked his ass off every fucking day. Like we as men can work our ass off and not worry about a woman. But since we ate the fruit, which was a tomato, not an apple. Okay. And the reason why, because in the good book, it says that the apple came off a vine. Apples don't grow on vines. Tomatoes do. And tomato is a fruit, not a vegetable. And it represents the juiciness of the woman's goodness. Right. Okay. So when we ate the goodness, we wanted that comfortability. That's why we told God, you know, God, we work, we work, we work, we work. Dude, we can put so much pressure on our backs as men you know, handle so much, right? But people don't think we're emotional. But at the end of the day, we want to relieve ourselves. Right? Always, always. Didn't you tell me earlier, didn't you say, Scott, listen, after this interview was over with, you even looked at me like she was a mill. You were like, man, Scott, after I stopped fucking with you tonight, nigga, I got this girl coming by. You know what? I looked at you like, nigga, I'm trying to do like you. Uh, ah! Yeah! Five finger discount. Look, it's another episode. I appreciate you guys tapping. Appreciate in. you. It's your boy Dre PG with nonstop Scott. I appreciate it, Dre. Thank and you. And I man. appreciate you coming down. If you didn't know, now you know the reason why we call it the five finger. I need to more than nine. It's because we used to steal shit. And we back outside, man. Tap in with the next episode. Shout out to my boy Director Jimmy, and shout out to our sponsors, Seattle Sluggers, and also Tap Man. 007, get your tattoo, $50 off your first tattoo. All you got to do is tap in with boy. Two more than all. Be smooth. Y'all tap in with your boy. Yeah, get the money fast, no late payment. She know where it's at, she don't got to say shit. Get a check, spend a check on some day shit. She better bring back double.